Mr. Bailey, now is your opportunity to ask a question directly to Mr. Atkin. Mr. Atkinson, you've campaigned as being the only candidate who is fiscally responsible, yet you voted to increase the city budget and use city reserves, and in fact, almost doubled the size of the budget during your time on the council. While I have served, I voted to reduce the budget three times. You responded, you voted the way you did because times were good back then. So are you saying that fiscal responsibility is something that only applies when times are tough? No. Uh, if, you, if you look at, uh, you're saying you only increased the, count, uh, the, the budget, if you look at the last two years, the overall city budget has increased by $300 million. So you, that, uh, what you said there isn't true. But uh, over the course of the years, we, we lived with a, uh, a balanced budget all the way through. In fact, you're li living with a, a balanced number, uh, balanced budget now, and I, uh, and I think that's fis fiscally prudent. Uh, if, you look at, uh, if you look at some of the expenses that went out, I never, uh, I never took an expense for uh, a telephone. I never took an expense for a lunch. Uh, I never took uh, uh, an expense for a car wash. And these expenses go on routinely now. So those are some of the th things that you need to be prudent with. And if you look at the state economy uh, that, uh, that we have now, uh, it's uncertain as to where that's going to land. If some of these ballot measures don't pass, the state is going to move some of those costs down to the county. And from the county, we're going to feel the pinch. And so we need to be uh, prudent on how we're going to spend our money right now. Uh, quick follow-up on my end, and one word answer, all that's necessary. Have you endorsed or are you opposing Proposition 30, the Governor's Tax Initiative? Mr. Atkinson. Uh, I am opposing it. Mr. Bailey, as a teacher, and the impacts are great for the education system, I'm supporting it. So, Mr. Atkinson, since you're opposing Proposition 30, I want to get back to what your prior answer was. Is it, it begs the question, if you're opposing Prop 30, the city and the county will be impacted if it fails. So h how do you justify uh, those I fees? don't know if that's for, for certain, but I think that's what they'll be looking at. But what, what has to happen is we need to cut expenses. We need to cut expenses on, on the uh, national level. We need to cut expenses on the state level. And what they need to do, instead of trying to, trying to fill the gap on the backs of the county and the city, they need to look at their, their, uh, their own level and start making some uh, cuts. But how will that impact Riverside? We understand Sacramento may need some cuts, but if Prop 30 fails, arguably, that will dramatically impact municipalities, cities, and counties. But we, we don't know what those impacts are now, but we need to start to prepare for them. I think there's a lot of things that the city can do in its own fiscal budget to make some cuts and prepare for it. Mr. Bailey, at the same time, we know that these are difficult times and having an additional tax placed on uh, folks can be a difficult burden. What would you say to those folks that say, I I'm simply over taxed? We've got to look at um, the bottom line and, and education is, should be our number one goal in this country, in this state, in, in this city. That is the future of our workforce, which ultimately impacts our economic development and our quality of life. And so if we're not ready to invest in education, invest in, in local government that is the hands and feet and that, that, that fixes the, the real problems that are out there for, for my constituents, for, for our residents, then, I, you know, I, I, what else can we do?